worldview. And look at Baltimore, for example. Man, this is crazy. Now, there's a lot of crazy stuff going on in Baltimore. How the police respond to uh, a public assembly or what you may call uh, a protest, civil protest or whatnot, if they're showing up militantly, that is an advancement in the police state. I don't actually believe people should be allowed to destroy other people's property, and I don't think you should be allowed to just throw Molotov cocktails and act a fool. I don't think you should be allowed to do that. But I also agree with the fact that showing up in military-style garb when human beings are just exercising their human rights is also not ridiculous. A, Here's something to push back on what we're saying, right? You're not a huge fan of the Tea Party. Fair, fair, party fair, enough, fair enough, fair enough. So let's say that the, the Tea Party was burning the city down and the cops came in in military garb. People of the leftist leaning would say, good, go get these guys. They're disturbing the peace. This isn't cool. Let's say uh, Occupy protesters are down there, and let's say they're burning everything down. Now what I see happening is it's all, yeah. it's all about what side of the political aisle you look yeah, at. Now if, they show, now, if they change the law in regards to us, they, charge the, they change the law in regards to everybody. Cops, cops right now are riding around in SUVs, right? Why are they riding around in SUVs? So they can carry more equipment. You know what I'm saying? That's what they said on the news. That's the, just the reason why they're not they're not using the sector as much, and they're using these SUVs is so that they can carry more of this new equipment that they're ordering. More artillery, more yeah. military-grade yeah. equipment. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. That's, that's... I agree. I want to be intellectually honest because me and you agree on this. So here's the other perspective. This is what my police friend would say to me. The reason that these cops are gearing up like this is because they face a greater threat than ever. And so when I say, hey, I'm here What's in the, the military, never mind, I'm playing devil's advocate here. I'm, I'm anti-police state. I just want to be very clear about that. But my friend who works as a police officer, I mentioned this to him. And I, and I have another friend who was down in Baltimore, actually got called in at the National Guard, and I mentioned the same thing to him. I'm saying, why are you guys in riot gear? Why you got this kind of artillery? It, like it's a, it looks like there's a war zone down there. Both of these guys will say to me, no, 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 no. The reason that these, co these police are, are buying all this SWAT gear and buying all these high-end weapons and all this ridiculous stuff that I think is completely disproportionate with a, with a civil police force, they're claiming that's because – that the criminals that they're facing are, are more armed than ever, have more gear than ever, and it's just a, it's a power equilibrium type of thing. That's, that's absolutely not true. I mean, you're talking about the Wild West. So tell me, like, did you see the, the, the last incident in Baltimore, the last little news where there's a militia that's now showing up in Baltimore? Walking around with the protesters, nobody know who really they represent, or what they're for. They said they're there to. What is their stated cause? Because I don't know that I know about this. Uh, you gotta Google it, man. Now, like, like it, as in the last well, couple of days. Yeah, within the last couple of days, they were walking around Baltimore, protesters, uh, with, with like AR-15s, man. They had, you know, uh, military-grade rifles, um, pistols, and bulletproof vests. Whose side, I mean, whose side were they on? That's what the newscaster was asking. Nobody really knew. The, the, you know, some of them were telling the protesters that they were there for the protesters. And, and, and some of them were saying that they were there to protect the business. That one, that that one slipped there. right under my radar, man. I got to Google that. I didn't hear uh, anything about that. That's crazy. Man, that is, can, now, can you imagine an organization of black people, black men, dressed in, in AR-15s and pistols and, and bulletproof vests? Walking with protesters, man, I couldn't believe they were allowed to just be there like that. And I didn't even—I thought it was illegal just to even have a uh, to wear a, a bulletproof vest, man. You, you're of the opinion that they got away with that because they're white. That's your opinion, right? Oh man, I'm saying that if you were black, you couldn't get away with it. Oh, can you imagine? Can you imagine? No, no, no. In all like, fairness, like, I can't. like twenty. Even if it was just twenty, I don't know if they were AR-15s. I'm not. Don't quote me on the specifics on the weaponry, but I'm telling you, it was it was military grade. You know, plain sight. They must have had their permits to carry because I can't imagine. Well, there must be some kind of explanation for that, but I, maybe not. I mean, the world's so freaking crazy right now. You know what's yeah. interesting, Rondell? Oh, I have a question for you. So my friend lives in Baltimore. He's telling me the death tolls in Baltimore are through the roof. People are getting yeah. killed down there like crazy. The cities are pop Ferguson a year later popping off again. People are probably going to get hurt. 
All these cities are in an uproar. You got young black men and women are passionate about a, a message that they want to send. But I can tell you this from talking to people in my life, whatever message they're trying to send to America, it's not getting through. Is the optics, or at least what we're being shown on on the media? Yeah. You already know how I feel about the media. But the way yeah. this is all coming off, right? Is, is yeah. not like unify us or draw our attention to something. No. It's just what kind of crazy lunatics are doing this today. Like that's how people are receiving the yeah. message. But do you think like me that – see, when I see this kind of thing, I get suspect because okay. what is this even doing for – like, okay, so let's say the black community is a severe justice gap and this gap needs to be filled and there needs to be a – what is any of this doing to fill that gap? I don't see – I don't it's see not, any positivity it's, coming from well, any of this. So this is the positive to me. It's simply awareness, man. That's the only positive. Awareness in and of itself doesn't doesn't help the cause. Um, it does have a consequence. It has a well, not if, not if the, well, not if the most it's, of the it's, country it's is not, turning against you. Not if most of the well, country is is getting more and more frustrated and angry at the approach. That's not. That's, that's because not, of that's because of how the media is is portraying. Well, that might be true. Going, let me address the black community thing, okay? Now, if you notice, um, the black people of this generation, my generation, your generation, we are, very simply put, American. Right, we I agree. We are American. Now, there is no real black community. What I mean by that is I'm not trying to abandon my black people. What I'm trying to say is, is that we are only united by civil injustice. That's the only thing that unites black people, meaning that we don't go to, you know, a black community, you know, center and, and, and participate in, in discussions on how we improve our community and take and create a budget and, and you know, vote. Right. It's not even a, a community. It doesn't even exist. I would say the black community does have churches. That's a community. But uh, other, than that's that, other than that. That's church. That's church. That, yeah, but that, that's a community. That, that, like my church, my church is well. I mean, it's different. I think it's rich, and I think it's healthy, and it's 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 yeah, probably but like like my, the churches that I grew up in were mixed. You know what I'm saying? I didn't grow right. up I mean, in that's all. True. We function as Americans. When we go shopping, we don't go specifically right, right, a black. Right. Right. Like like Jews may, I, may they may prefer to do business within their community. We will go straight to Kroger's. We go straight to Walmart. Right, we go right, straight to right. So we 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 just don't feel connected because we're not. <laughs> yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't feel you know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't know this guy that's, that's living over here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he, we might like some of the same music, but he probably don't like half the music I listen to. I listen to music, all kinds of music. Yeah, you know I, I, get, so, I get what you're saying. I think you're right about that, by you the know, way. I think that, so, and I like how you said this generation more than any other is like that, I think. Yeah, yeah. So when, when we look on TV and I'm seeing all these brothers getting shot straight up for no reason, I have no choice but to be tuned into that because that I already feel suspect as a black man walking in the store. But now, I mean, you, my wife can tell you, bro, I almost got shot. I was at the, I was in that situation where if it was one of these Westernville cops was just a little bit more trigger happy, my life would have been taken just because I was trying to get into my car. I got locked out of. I was locked out of my car. I locked my keys in the car. So I wasn't stupid, though. At the time, I, my car was in my wife's name. So as a man, black man, I, I knew on the inside to walk home and get my wife because if they see me and they did approach me, I would need to be able to prove that that's my car. But I did not expect what I was going to get, though. So I walked home. I got my wife. I walked back, and um, I had a Jimmy. So I was, you know, trying to get it, you know, get into my car, and I guess somebody assumed that I was still in the car. So they called the cops. Man, I'm telling you, I look up, and I'm surrounded. Like, I'm telling you, they're coming in in the parking lot at 70 miles per hour, man, just from all different directions. Man, my wife contested this, bro. Like, it was like five I, I believe you. I believe you. me, guns drawn, everything, bro, because I'm, I'm locked out of my car. You see what I'm saying? Like, how do you go that extreme? without knowing if the person is even armed or what they're doing. I, I, I can't imagine that happening to an old lady walking out of Mark's. She got locked out of her car. She's trying to get in a car. I can't imagine that. I agree. I agree. There that was seems un, crazy to me. It was, un, it was an unlike a service person, man. It was not there not to serve me. 
They're not to protect me. And I agree that's totally ridiculous. You know what I think is happening, man? I honestly believe this to be true. I think these cops are equally afraid. I really, and I can't prove man, it. They, they can't, you can't be that afraid, man. You're, you're, I don't know. You're, you're, I mean, I'm not a cop. Are, I, could, they, I could be wrong. There are, I could be there wrong. Are, they, can, they, can, they can choose to tase you without super. They don't have to. They don't have to resort to drawing their weapons. Well, I agree with you. I think that's totally they're, excessive. They're, they're, they're trained in in, in 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 combat, so they know how to take a person down. They're trained with that. They know how. They got bully clubs. They they got backup. They don't value black life like they value everybody else, man. It's just that plain, man. It, it it's is, a value system, man. It's it a might value be true. System. I like I, I I can't speak to these things because I I really don't know. Them. Man, but just, I, just look but at I, it. Just look at it. It's a value system. It's how, like, I'm not saying they don't value us at all, but they're not going to treat us like they treat, you know, they're not going to treat us like they treat everybody. And we got to know that, and if we want to survive, we got to adapt to it. That's our responsibility. So I'm not saying, yeah, just because we feel like we should have the right to talk to the cop any old kind of way, we may feel like we should have that right, and yeah, you should possibly have that right, but don't exercise it, okay? Because you might end up dead. Perfect. This conversation, Rondell, is the, is the conversation that the nation needs to have. And the nation needs to be given a platform outside of all the hyperbolic nonsense that we're always doused in. And, and white America and cops and everybody else needs to hear that I resort back to MLK. The reason we heard... It's because the environment was created where people were going to listen. Like, I have respect for you. I trust you. I know what kind of man you are, right? So there are – this human beings are human beings, and, and America, I do believe, wants to get better, and I do believe wants to fix problems. And we'll always have problems, and we'll always want to fix them. But this, like, state that we're in right now, man, there's, there's no correction mechanism. It's, it's the state there's of no, fear, man. We've been living I know, long but, but I'm and telling fear. you. It's the powerful are trying to get power over our division. It's the media is lying. It's that nobody's talking to each other. It's that everybody's afraid. It's that everybody's angry. There's all kinds of misconceptions. And that message you just gave me where, you know, five or six cops pull up when you're just trying to get into your car, like that kind of discussion, if it's in the context of a real discussion where people are listening to each other, that will move the needle. But this kind of crap I see on TV where – People are shutting down roads and all kinds of stuff like that. I'm telling you right now. I'm yeah, telling ignorance. you the truth. The, that hurts the cause. Yeah, this, hurts and this, the is, this is why. And this is why these people are doing. It sometimes it hurts me too because I'm telling you I'm American, so <laughs> I see things similar to you. You know what I'm saying? When I'm looking on there, yeah, if I sure. see if I see ignorance, man, I'm shaking my head like, man, man, why they gotta be out there with their pants down or why they gotta be out there, you know, be ignorant? But I know that if they weren't out there, that nobody would care. It would just get – it would go away in the silence. Nobody would have even known by Sarah Bland. I get what you mean because actually like when people actually aren't apathetic and they do something against power, I actually like it. But the thing I don't like about it, if it has no end game. Like, yeah. like, you know, the Selma March and these, these guys did stuff. These guys weren't yeah. sitting around twiddling their thumbs. But once yeah. they got the voice, what did they say? They they pleaded to our humanity, and they spoke about the Ten Commandments. They spoke about the Constitution. Yeah. They spoke about the Bill of Rights. They they said things that made a yeah. difference. They didn't just drop they the united, F on them and call united, everybody else they, names. Yeah, they used united speech, and that's that's the thing that I'm pro. I'm for because I don't really necessarily want to be black because I am black, and I will always be black, and I love that. But – I just want to be an American. So that's the goal. So, that's the dream. Yeah, that was yeah, MLK. Yeah, I, I'm, yeah, I think that. That's, and there's a lot of black. I have uh, black friends that, could, um, that you know are on the extreme opposite. They're angry. They think that black people should have their own black Wall Street and all of that. I've never seen a positive example of segregation. And when I think of segregation, I think of the Gaza Strip. I'm thinking of concentration camps. I'm thinking of, you know, the Indians. Right, I right, think right, of, right. I, I believe God was creating a new world here. Now, what God does is, is, is naturally going to occur, but when man is involved, then you got our own, you know, we got our own, Artificial drama. We got our. We, we got. Yeah, that's true. You know, that's it's true. Just, like like for instance, slavery and all of that kind of stuff. In in some of my abstract thinking, you know, I'm a poet. 
But I see it as just a movement of mankind towards the creation of this new world where all the human beings would, you know, 